Takoteki, if we're <laughs> now truly live on Abogadong Pinoy. Tingnan natin. How can I check? I should check. It are we are live. Uh, you you see yourself? Yes. Oh, cool. Hello. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh, diba? Uh, hintay tayo ng mga kaunting segundo. We now have some people watching us. And I just wanted to share that um, the Abogadong Pinoy uh, Humans of AP series, it's something that I've wanted to do for um, a long time. And uh, I don't know, it was just really something that I thought to open it Dapat si Misen. Yung ganon, ganon talaga yung na-feel ko. Oh, and, um, so but it took some time, right? Because I was very busy. So as you know, I, I was examiner. So uh, parang I couldn't commit, but I couldn't say why. That's why I had to delay. And then I needed some time to breathe. We because... should have known with that BTS question that it was you. That it was you. <laughs> but to be fair, it wasn't really me. I just, when I drafted um, exam questions, it was X, married to Y, or ah. Z. So it was really the team of uh, Justice Kagiwa. I who put those names. So obviously, ARMY sila, and they're also members of Boy I'm Lever. ARMY too. I know, I know. So I'm preaching to the choir. So yes. honestly, Miss N, uh, the, the experience was so much fun because I was in charge of checking forms. One form in particular, it's a yep. deed of sale. And yung notary nila, BTS lagi. Kim oh Namjoon, ang notary nila. Yung witness yeah. nila, Kim Sok Jin, ganun. Oh. So, Nakakatawa. But yeah, so we have around, um, I think we have uh, some people who are already watching us live. Hello. But, um, I do want you guys to, to post your comments. If you have comments or questions for Miss Sen, I know that um, you're starting to maybe unwind because it's the weekend. Maybe some of you are already opening that bottle of beer. Or, you know, just um, putting your feet up because it's Netflix night. But I thought that maybe this is also the best time for us to do our first Humans of AP. And our first guest, um, like I said, is Attorney Misen Desiderio Dime. She is, of course, a lawyer. That's why she is our first guest. A passionate advocate of women's rights and inclusion and diversity. She is an LGBT ally, mother, jewelry designer. Look at what she's wearing. It's beautiful. I've ordered siguro, ha I, I don't know anyone. Oh my gosh, yes. And lover of shoes. She has lots of shoes. She is, of course, the director of legal services for Accenture Incorporated, a consulting IP and BPO firm with over 80,000 employees in the Philippines from 2012 to date. Most recently, and this is truly amazing, she was awarded ALB Women in Law Southeast Asia Awards General Counsel of the Year, Legal 500 Power List 2023, and Legal 500 Southeast Asia In-House Team of the Year 2023. And just recently, or I think last week, she just came from Singapore. So she'll tell us more about that. And um, before her life in Accenture, she was already an accomplished woman. She was litigation partner at Puno and Puno Law Office and worked for Pecabar or Ponce and Rile Reyes Manalastas. She led the Banco de Oro Asset Recovery Litigation Unit and also headed the Macquarie Offshore Limited Commercial Legal Team in Manila. So, and dami nang nangyari sa buhay ni Misen. But you wouldn't think that because she looks... Like my age, or even oh younger. Oh my God, that's the best thing ever. She's an Athenian, and uh, also from UP. So she graduated from Ateneo Law, uh, her JD, in 96, and from UP Deliman, BS Psychology, in 1991. So uh, I would like to introduce, and maybe Miss Anne can say hi to our audience from Abugadong Pinoy, Miss Anne Desiderio Dime. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. I'm very honored to be Joan's first guest on Abogadong Pinoy's Humans of AP. 
Um, and I'm here to share my story with you, hopefully encourage you because I'm someone that's been through the ups and downs of legal practice in my 25 years, 24 years in law, in, in the practice of law. All so right. you're thinking of someone who's been redundated twice, <laughs> has lost and found jobs, and finally found where she's happy. Oh, diba? And then, baka mamaya tatanungin kita, Miss Hen, kasi the photos that we posted have the words before, during, and after. So, ano kaya yung meaning ng before? Ano yung, ano yung reckoning period ng before? Ano yung during and yung after? But first, Miss Hen, one question, medyo showbiz question because this is humans of um, AP. Please share, Miss Hen, with us a memory of one of your biggest achievements as a lawyer. So, I'm sure marami, but just top of mind, ano yung naiisip mo ngayon? One of your best I think it, it will always be seeing your name in the newspaper that you passed the bar. I think really? that's the best memory. Of course, it's different now because it's the generation of instant gratification, diba? They can look at it online. During my time, you had to go to the Supreme Court and do a vigil and wait for the results to come out. And they would post these papers on bulletin boards outside the Supreme Court. And then you're there and you're looking for your name. And then you're scared that you won't be there. And then when you see that you passed, you're scared naman that your friends didn't pass. So right. it was... but. It, you know, that was always one of the highlights of my life, I think. For someone who never wanted to be a lawyer. Yes, I do recall that. It, it, well, it can was. you share a little bit? Because Miss San was already a guest in Abogadong Pinoy, but she was sharing her perspective as a successful woman lawyer. But she did mention before that she was a reluctant lawyer, or at least she started law school not really fully into it. So, can you share a bit about that, my son? I was a pre-med student because my parents, very traditional Asian parents, no, parang law, you know, lawyer, doctor, um, accountant, or engineer, di ba? Um, and they wanted me to be a doctor. I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I just went along with the tide. Na parang oh, sige, I'll go to pre-med, and I did that in UP. I even managed to pass the entrance exams i was admitted not to med school but okay. my heart really wasn't in it no so okay. i told my parents you know really i don't want to waste your money i don't want to be a doctor and that's such a big disappointment to them because i was the eldest no of very high achieving parents um and then one day my friend and this makes me sad because she passed away during COVID. A very good friend of mine, attorney Francesca Custodio. She used to be a member of AP before she passed away. But she was my roommate in college and she wanted to be a lawyer. So she wanted to take the Ateneo entrance. And got in coming UP. So we thought, I well, I thought, I don't want to go to school there because they're so rich. You know, the kids are different and I come from UP. <laughs> And she said, you don't have to pass the exam. You just have to take the test with me. I said, but what do I gain from doing this? <laughs> and she said, sige na, I'll pay the 500 peso exam fee. Just okay. take the test with me. I said, I still get nothing because the 500 will go to Ateneo. Correct. Nagpalibre ka ba ng lunch? Hindi. Sabi niya, oh sige, I'll give you I'll pay the 500 peso entrance fee and then I'll give you 500. So, okay. good deal. <laughs> I sold my soul and my future for 500 pesos. <laughs> 500. I, but, na yun yun. 500 is a like, lot at the time. No. That's like triple what it's worth now. No? But that's how I ended up in law school. The funny thing was, I didn't want my parents to know because I didn't want to go. So I was trying to intercept the, the letter, whether I passed or failed, I didn't care. I just didn't want them to know I took the test. But you know, this was before email. This was when right. the postman was very erratic. You never know when he'll show up, diba? So I would haunt the gate, waiting for the postman to arrive. Unfortunately, my dad intercepted the letter first. And he was so happy and proud of me that I could not 
say no. So I said, Dad, let's make a deal. And my first contract negotiate. Well, if you think about the 500 pesos, this is actually my second contract negotiation. That's so correct. I told my dad, okay, let's make a deal, Dad. I will do my best. I will not deliberately flunk out of law school. But if I do get kicked out, you will not pressure me to enter another law school and we will never speak of this again. And I think at that point, my dad was just so happy that I had found some sort of direction in my life <laughs> that he said yes. And that's how I ended up going to Ateneo. So um, obviously you were never kicked out. You finished and uh, you, you excelled in your classes. You passed the bar and then you went into an illustrious law firm. And then the rest is history. So, okay, meron tayong mga ups and downs in lawyering. And I'm sure, I'm sure you meron kang core memories of lawyering. Oh, yeah. Kinta naman tayo sa, was there ever a time you felt defeated and wanted to give up on lawyering? Like, ay, ayoko na. Ayoko na. Many, Lawyer ka na dapat nito, ha, Miss Ed? Meaning, many, many you're times. already working... And then you're like, oh, this is not worth it. Or I, I have better use for my time. Or maybe I should shift careers or something like that. Or if not that, maybe I should shift jobs. Yeah. Well, a lot of it was um, the circumstances being forced on me, no? Okay. Um, I was in Pekka Bar for about four or five years. I left when I was a junior associate. And then I went to Puno and Puno where I came in mid-level, no? But then, and then eventually I stayed, I became partner. Um, and then they were doing a reorg and I had a small child and I was um, really questioning what I was doing because we were litigating. If you recall the Cesgerlon kidnapping. Yes, by I do actually. Yeah, so I was, I was one of the private prosecutors there. And that was a very scary case because the um, we were getting death threats, no? Because the opposing party were very influential. It was it, and I had a two-year-old child, so okay. that's when I started thinking: Is it still worth it to um, remain in private practice, be doing litigation in these types of cases when I have a family? So that's when I started thinking about going in-house. But you know. I, I went into the in-house arena with the wrong mindset, no? Because, okay. you know, we in the law firms, we tend to think, I when you go in-house, that's the life, right? It's easy. You just sit there. You just give the work to external counsel. That's not true. Yes. In fact, it's, it's very difficult because when you're in a law firm, your mindset is advocate. Black yeah. and white. It's the law. This is against the law. And you dispense it from your ivory tower to yes. the, the in-house lawyers and kind of tell them, no, this is this is it. Whereas in-house lawyers have to be comfortable navigating in the gray area of the law. Because our laws are very old. They're very they haven't kept up with the times. And and most of the time the things we want to do, especially in a company like mine, which is, you know, talking about cloud, right. chat, GPT, AI, all of that stuff hasn't been litigated. No? So when I yes. entered the in-house practice, I still had that mindset na parang, ano, mas magaling ka pag nasa law firm ka. Kasi yung in-house counsel, madali yung buhay. But that's not true. So that's what, one of the biggest career lessons I learned is to shift the mindset to be more pragmatic because that's the only way that you will survive and thrive in an in-house mm -hmm. setting. I so saw I I resonate with this, no, because well, it's not naman that I was I had the wrong mindset when I went in-house. It's just that I was a litigation lawyer like you miss in as well. And in-house requires you to do not just litigation, diba? Yes. Lahat, gagawin mo. Lahat oh my na. God. And, and, you, and you have to kind of, ano, and kasi pag litigation lawyer ka like us, palaban pala, your stance is Correct. always adversarial. But when you become an in-house counsel, you have to be 
you have to realize that there's more. There's relationships. There's reputation. Exactly. It's not always a battle, diba? You exactly. have to think of that because you are an officer of the company now. So that's right. it's different when you're a counsel. And, and, and that's something I think our young lawyers need to think about if they're thinking about moving into an in-house in position. But I um, would really say spend some time in litigation first before you go in-house because when I examine my mentees, the people I've hired and who've gone on to successful careers, either still in Accenture or leading their own legal teams, and I can name so many, like a few of them, like, um, and they all seem to have litigation background because litigators have a way of looking at things and being able to identify the risks. Correct. And when you're in-house, it's very important because risk management is one of the biggest things you have to do. That is that is correct. And I think when when that's also a relief when you're in a law firm, I think. Yung matutulog ka and you don't really care about the company, right? Because it yeah. doesn't pay your bills or your salary. But when it's your company, you work for it and you're the lawyer, you care. And you know you you cannot afford not to care, and that's a double-edged sword, I think. I think so. Say, I, on the one hand, you would want not to care, right? I would want not to care, but I do. Ganyan. Yes, and you get very involved, like especially me, because I've been working for Accenture for over ten years, so it. it's home. And I I have a team that I've mentored. I'm so proud of them. The last award we won was a team award, and that's right. You know, they're amazing people. They're just fantastic. Kathy Lee um, worked with me in Puno, so we've been working together for about 15 years. Because she yeah, came man. with me from Puno. Um, there's Carlos Salva, Astrid De Alban, Mariel Domingo, Hazel De La Cruz. So many fantastic. Are they people. here in AP? Are they watching? I hope watching? they're here. I don't know. Okay, they might no. be working. Tayo, I tayo. Question. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I couldn't do my job without them because absolutely. Them, you know, it's to survive. We have eighty plus thousand employees, and I have a team of six, including myself. So you can just imagine the pressure. And how we've had to rely on technology, otherwise we will not survive. So these people are fantastic. They make yeah. I always say in my acceptance speeches that I have to thank them for making me look better than I actually am. Aww. Because it's all credit to them. And of course, a lot of credit to you, Anuba. But Miss uh, Anne, we only have uh, 12 more minutes because Oh my god. On, Are you going to ask but the yes, na? Oh, oh, so okay. ito na yung ko na. last question yes. na lang, Miss Anne, is up to you, no? How how deep you want to go into this. But you're now in a different journey. A, a journey that you did not expect. Um, can you share a bit about that and what your lessons are? Um, I think that you yeah. want to share with fellow APs uh, now that you're battling a, an entirely different journey. Please go ahead, Miss Anne. So when you when the photo that you shared this before, no, before, during, after, and that I count that as my second, I guess my awake reawakening to my life because the before picture was taken in October 2022 when I was finally named as. Southeast Asia Legal 500. And as you know, Legal 500, they don't take applications. They they do their independent research. And if they like you, they put you that, on that list. You can't nominate yourself. First. So it was a big deal. And then I was so happy because they called me to do the keynote address. And that was another big deal. Um, so I was in Singapore. I had overcome a year-long battle against depression and anxiety. And I was finally feeling good about my life. And I felt like, you know, I've reached, I've gone to where I wanted to go in my career. And I think that um, I thought that everything would be a straight road to retirement from there. But I went home to the philippines and in two weeks i was diagnosed with stage four cancer 
I had to have emergency surgery. And I was told that I have a 15 to 20 percent chance of surviving the next five years. So, during is me fighting the battle because I refuse to be a statistic. If I think some of you were there when I did the opening address for the GC summit at the New World Hotel in February, when I said that when they told me I had a 15 to 20 percent chance of surviving the next five years, I told myself I will not be a statistic. If I only have five years, then I will make every day of that five years a day of gratitude and happiness. I will live, I will fight, I will fight for my advocacies because this battle has to mean something. Right. I mean, I, I, I can't, I don't want to have gone through, and it's very difficult to go through chemotherapy and all the treatments. I don't want that to be for nothing. So ever since I got sick, I've been advocating people to do early colon cancer screening. And um, hopefully when I survive this, I want to get involved in raising funds for cancer patients who can't afford chemotherapy because it is very expensive. And when I think of the 85, 80% of people who die because how much of it is because they really couldn't afford the treatment? Because the treatment is there. So yesterday, well, this week is my final chemotherapy. I've been chronicling this journey. If you're on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel where we kind of talk about what I've been through. And so today was actually the day they pulled the plug on the, because I was attached to an IV. If you can see, I have to wear these necklaces because I have an, I have an implant. Yung may porta cut? That's a porta cut because okay. you get, you get um, needles inserted so often that your veins collapse. So this is directly connected to my heart now, to the jugular vein. And that, that's where the medicine passes. But it will be with me forever because we never know when I will need it again. Um, I'm scheduled for a PET scan in two weeks. And they will tell me if I'm in remission or I need to do more maintenance chemotherapy. We're hoping for the remission. But yes. I told my family, if I'm not in remission, we will just continue to fight. But I did say... No extraordinary remedies. If I lose consciousness, do not resuscitate me. I want you to donate anything of me that can still be donated. <laughs> um, my heart is still good. You know, my, my kidneys are in great shape. So hopefully it will benefit other people. And then the after is just me living my life despite the diagnosis. So... You know, we, we won awards during the time I was under treatment. We, we were nominated for an internal award globally because Kathy, Oman, and my team, we do non-standard software review for Accenture. It's a, it's a purely Filipino-made technology that I'm so proud of, and it's nominated for an award in Dublin. So it's just about... When I when the doctor said you have cancer, parang that's the worst thing that you could ever imagine hearing, de ba? So for the first week, probably I I was crying, I was hysterical, I refused to see people, and then one day I just realized, you know, crying is not gonna change anything. And do you really want if you only have five years? Do you want to spend every day of those five years? and ruin it by worrying about what's going to happen on the fifth year? Or do you want to make a change, make a difference, be happy, be grateful for every day and everyone that comes into your life until one day it's time to go, then it's time to go, right? And you know, I've had a fantastic life, really. So who am I to complain when it's time's up, diba? I, I've I've drank the wine, I've eaten the food, I've visited the places, I've argued before the Supreme Court, I've um, 
done what I wanted to do. I have beautiful children. I have a husband that loves me. I, 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 I had a wonderful childhood. So it would be the height of ungratefulness if I were to complain that God is taking me early. After all, I'm 50 plus. So that's a pretty long life. And I can only be grateful for what I've been given. Wow. You know, you are truly inspiring and it's not BS. You know, people say that all the time. Oh, you're inspiring. But I mean, throughout your journey, and I do subscribe to your YouTube channel. So I've watched, especially the early days where where I could see the pain. Right? You're very transparent that way, Miss Hen. And I think that's important because so many people put up walls and, you know, masks and they hide behind, you know, uh, fake personas but i think what you're doing is you're doing a great service to those who are fighting the battle with you and may fight the battle in the future because we never know right we never know what will happen in the future so i think that being yourself is the greatest gift you can give to us because it's true it's true I, well for me i wanted to show other people fighting cancer that you can have a normal life you can still do what you have to do you have to do it around the treatments of course but you don't have to be the suffering heroine in a tragic novel diba? there yeah. can be peace and happiness if you have gratitude and it's so funny because I think of cancer as taking so much away from me, but actually it gave back in return. Like friends I haven't seen for years, um, you know, people that I didn't even know reaching out to me, people telling me my friends, 39 of my friends have had colon cancer screening and thank God all of them have cleared. What is the colon cancer screening, Miss N? What do we need to um, do? And what's the age group for that? When you, yeah, when you hit 45 and up, actually ideally 45 because before 50, but then they're seeing it in younger and younger people. In fact, um, I was, it was also my fault. I was due for a colonoscopy two years ago, um, but it's an unpleasant procedure. So I put it off, I put it off and then the pandemic came and I didn't do it. But it turns out I've had cancer five years before the diagnosis, which could have been if could have found it earlier i wouldn't be stage four but that it is what it is and can only accept god must have a plan for me and i trust that plan if it's for me to spread the word about cancer awareness or to encourage people to donate to cancer societies or to cheer people up because they're also undergoing the battle with chemotherapy then I must have done something. If I can just save one person from having to go through what I have to go through, then it would have been worth it, right? The fingers that don't work. Um, sometimes I fall down because the neuropathy hits my feet and it gets oh. um, weak. Some, like right now, I can't write or sign because my fingers are very stiff and um, painful, but... It will go away. So I, I like my hair will come back one day. Your and hair is fabulous, Miss Anne. What are you talking about? Well, you have I, love I, love I love it. Thank you. I look like a, I, I look like a boy, but that's okay. <laughs> and you know, it's ako kasi parang whenever I feel sad, I always think this too shall pass. Right. And I think about the story of Job in the Bible mm -hmm. and how god threw everything every disaster at him and at the end of the day he was still faithful and we just have to trust because what else is there and i'm not the type of person that will give up i was redundated i've lost so many jobs i had to live through my father's quadruple bypass i had to you know i i got covid twice i lost my best friend during covid and I'm thinking, you know, if I could survive losing my dad, all of those things, I can survive anything. This cancer is not going to beat me. It may kill me, but it would never kill my spirit. Love that. 
Wow, we're done. Eight wow. p.m. on the dot. See, and it was See? so lovely talk to you. Yes, thank you so much, Miss N. Uh, I hope that our APs got a lot from that. If there's nothing that you got from that, please have a colonoscopy once you hit forty-five. Please do that for yourself and for your loved ones. And Miss N, we thank you for your gift of time and the inspiration that you give us, uh, especially to the women lawyers here. You know, Miss N is so accessible and approachable. I'm sure she would love to mentor our young yeah. women lawyers who want to know more about like options, direction. And um, yeah, Miss N is, is fabulous. And by the way, she... The jewelry she's wearing, she just makes those and um, you can purchase them. And she gives discounts for AP. So is it that great? One of the projects we're going to do is we're going to, we're trying to find a shoe designer to collaborate with me and design okay. a, a cancer shoe. The proceeds okay. of which will be donated to PGH. So I will keep you posted. Nako, yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you so much. We all have loved ones who are going through cancer treatments or, you know, or other illnesses. So we continue to pray for them and we continue to pray for Miss Anne. We love and you. Your and mom. thank you. I love you. Give your mom a big hug because yes. moms are, I wouldn't have survived without my mom. Oh, that's so, true. Yeah. Women rule. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. And till next, humans of AP. Next. Humans of AP, I'm your host, Joanne de Venecia Fabulk. This has been Hapagadong Pinoy. Bye! Bye!